Greetings grade 10. Today we are going to see the first chapter of biology life processes. This chapter is divided into five subtopics. In the first one we are going to discuss about nutrition, then digestion in human body, respiration in humans, circulation and excretion. Talking about the life process, these are all the different types of processes which makes a living organism alive. The first topic that is nutrition. Nutrition is defined as the whole process by which organisms intake its food and utilize it. In the green plants, the nutrition is taken by the process of photosynthesis that is preparation of food or synthesizing food in the presence of light whereas in animals we see heterotrophic nutrition that is the heterotrophs do not prepare their own food but are dependent on autotrophs for the nutrition. The mode of nutrition can be divided into two autotrophic and heterotrophic. The difference of autotrophic and heterotrophic is an important two marks or a one marks question which comes in the board examination. Autotrophic nutrition will be defined as the mode of nutrition in which organism can prepare its own food and heterotrophic is the mode of nutrition in which organism is dependent on the other organism for the nutrition. Please keep in mind that autotrophic nutrition and autotrophs is two different terminology. In autotrophs we talk about the organism but in autotrophic mode of nutrition we are talking about the mode of nutrition. In the autotrophic mode of nutrition the simple inorganic molecules are converted into complex organic molecules. Now we are going to see one of the process of autotrophic nutrition basically autotrophic or autotrophs are of two types one is chemoautotroph and the other is photoautotroph in grade 10 in detail we are going to see the photoautotrophs or photosynthesis now photosynthesis is synthesizing of food or glucose in the presence of sunlight on the screen you can see the equation of photosynthesis. It's very important for you all to practice the equation because it comes as a one marks question, can be as a two marks question and many questions are derived from this particular equation. You have to practice the equation and that too a balanced equation. Now if you look at the equation, all the left hand side reactants like the carbon dioxide, water, sunlight and chlorophyll these are the four raw materials which are required by the plants and these four raw materials are combined together to form a complex molecule that is carbohydrate which you can see as C6H12O6 this is the chemical formula of glucose which is a carbohydrate along with that you also have a byproduct that is oxygen which is released and water the release of water is also known as transpiration. Taking care of the site of photosynthesis, where exactly it is happening? It is happening in the green leaves of the plant. In the leaves of the plant, you have the cell organelle called as chloroplast, which contain the green pigment chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the one which can absorb the sunlight and can store it inside the plant. Now, Talking about the events or the steps of photosynthesis, it's an important three marks question which comes in the board examination. The first step of the photosynthesis is absorption of sunlight. So sunlight is absorbed by the help of the chlorophyll pigment which is present inside the leaf. The second step is conversion of light energy into chemical energy. and this chemical energy is used to split out the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen which is the byproduct of the photosynthesis is released from the water molecule. This is very important for you to know and not from the carbon dioxide what normally we think. The third step of photosynthesis is reduction of carbon dioxide 
into carbohydrates. So, after discussing the photosynthesis, one of the very important cell organelle which helps in photosynthesis is stomata. Stomata is the tiny pores which are present on the surface of leaf. These are present more in number on the lower surface area of the leaf when compared to the upper surface area. Now stomata diagram is an important two marks question which comes in the board exam. Half marks is given for the diagram drawing. Another half marks goes for the three labelings each carrying half marks. So that is how you get your two marks. Function of stomata is again of two. One exchange of gas and the second is the release of water from it. You can see the kidney bean shaped guard cell which when gets filled with the water swells up. As the guard cell swells up the stomatal pore is open. Stomatal pore gets open and allow the carbon dioxide to move in and oxygen to move out. When the oxygen is moving out along with that the extra water molecule also moves out that is the transpiration. So both the process that is transpiration as well as exchange of gases happens in the stomatal pore. At this point of time it is important for us to discuss what happens in desert plant. The question which comes in the board exam is how the photosynthesis is different in desert plant than the normal plants. Now in the desert plant the carbon dioxide is absorbed during night and not during day. Carbon dioxide is absorbed and an intermediate is formed. This intermediate is acted upon in the day with the help of sunlight. So absorption of carbon dioxide happens at night and it is stored as in an intermediate inside the leaf and this intermediate is acted upon daytime with the sunlight. This is one of the adaptation in order to lower the water or the transpiration process that can happen if the carbon dioxide is absorbed during the daytime. So stomatas are closed during day to hold the water inside and they, they takes in the gases or exchange of gases only happens during the night time. Now talking about the heterotrophic nutrition Heterotrophic nutrition is the mode of nutrition in which organism depends on the other organism. Now there are three types of heterotrophic nutrition. First one holozoic nutrition, saprophytic nutrition and parasitic nutrition. If you see holozoic nutrition this is that type of heterotrophic nutrition in which organism is taking the complete solid food inside and is breaking that or digesting that inside the body what happens in our body or in amoeba body or any of the animals body. When I talk about saprophyte here the organism is depending on dead and decaying matter. Digestion actually happens outside the body of the organism as you see in fungi. The digestive juices are secreted outside, digestion happens outside and after digestion the absorption is what is happening in the saprophytes. When I talk about parasite, the parasites are those organisms which lives inside or outside the host organism and it is taking the nutrition from the host organism. It is not preparing its own food. It is depending on a host organism for the nutrition. So holozoic may the animal is taking a complete food. Saprophyte may it is taking the food or nutrition from the dead and decaying matter and in the parasite it is taking the nutrition from the host organism either by staying inside the body or from the outside. Clear? Now you have to keep in mind all the three examples for the three types of heterotrophic nutrition. Now we are going to see the holozoic in detail. The steps of holozoic nutrition where the animal takes the food completely inside the body and then do the digestion. It can be divided into five steps. The first being ingestion. Ingestion is intake or taking the food inside. Followed by digestion that is break down the food into simpler form. Then absorption that is absorbing the digested food or the simpler form. Assimilation which is utilization of the food for the growth or repairing of the cell or any of the metabolic activity and then the ejection that is removal of the waste product. So steps of holozoic nutrition you have five steps ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ejection. Now um, 
these five steps is done by all the organisms if you look at a unicellular organism that a single celled organism they also follow all the five step or a multicellular organism like us also follow all the five step talking about the unicellular organism i have given the two examples that is amoeba and paramecium if you look at amoeba you can see very clearly how it is ingesting the food inside that it is doing the pseudopodia and taking the food inside with the pseudopodia then you can see a food vacuole getting created in which the food is inside wherein inside the food vacuole the digestive juices will be um, uh, will be secreted and the digestion will happen after digestion the absorption and assimilation will also happen from the food vacuole and then in the fourth diagram of amoeba then you'll have the ejection happening wherein the undigested food from the amoeba will be moving out of the cell same thing happens in paramecium as well but in paramecium the food is taken in at a specific spot so uh, the body of the paramecium have small hair like structures which are called as cilia that will move the food towards the mouth okay towards the oral cavity which is there inside the paramecium and then the food moves out whereas in amoeba any part of the cell membrane can extend itself form pseudopodia and will be taking in the food now this is the difference how the amoeba takes in food and how the paramecium takes in food i hope i'm very clear i started the topic with explaining what exactly is nutrition and how we have two different types of nutrition then we have taken forward the autotrophic mode of nutrition in which we have discussed the photosynthesis equation steps where exactly it is happening and how exactly it is happening what are the by products and what is the role of stomata in photosynthesis after that we have seen the heterotrophic mode of nutrition in which we have seen the three types of heterotrophic uh, nutrition along with going in the steps of the holozoic nutrition taking the example of amoeba this amoeba diagrams comes as a two marks question for explaining the steps of holozoic nutrition with this the nutrition topic is done the next in the next session we are going to talk about digestion in humans